Welcome back to FT Markets. The Financial Times is about to hold its first uh, debt capital markets conference in London. So what are the weather conditions like in financial markets globally? With me to discuss this is John Plender, the FT's respected financial columnist. John, if you are looking at the world from on high, what would you see as the, the biggest issues for capital markets right now? I think my big worry at the moment is really the extent to which the world has a problem with deficient demand. And really, particularly if you look at the Eurozone, I think there's a big question about whether we might be at risk of slipping into a deflationary psychology. Well, what does that mean for financial markets exactly? They're overpriced or is it uh, What it means is that um, the bond markets may be overpriced but could become more overpriced because you've got a combination of this, uh, uh, this problem of a, the threat of deflation plus uh, the potential for Eurozone quantitative easing to also... Uh, encourage people to take on more risk and push yields down further. If we look at our first chart, we've actually uh, shown perhaps some of those um, worries in, 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 in a graphic form, if you like. We've had um, steady global growth recently after the terrible years 08, 09, but stock markets racing ahead and there's quite a gap opening up. That's presumably suggesting there's a big disconnect between financial markets and the real economy. Well, this chart really is a story about central bank unconventional measures, what they have been doing through QE has been to encourage people to take on more risk and you see in the equity markets that they've been tending to run ahead of what's happening with economic growth. Big question is can economic growth uh, pick up to justify these kind of valuations and I think that, the, that one of the, the, the big worries we have in the world is both the divergent patterns of growth between the US and the rest and a, and, and a worry too about whether US growth is not just a bit too fragile for comfort. Do you worry about uh, central bank central bank wars, easing wars, if you like, competitive easing, all the central banks, we've had 15, I think, so far this year, easing. Is this process getting out of control? Do the central banks, are they losing their grip? I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I mean, I think talking about currency wars is difficult. What central banks are essentially doing is addressing their own domestic problems. Now, a consequence of that tends to be weaker exchange rates where they embark on quantitative easing, but they are doing it chiefly for their own domestic purposes. However, having said that, it creates uh, problems, particularly for those countries which are, which are at the wrong end of, uh, of the process because their currencies are appreciating considerably and that's where you start getting these negative interest rates which uh, is really quite worrying. Which we need to come on right now, I mean, we, we should, I, mean, I suppose the consequence of these dislocations is a lot of volatility ahead in financial markets. We could also talk about geopolitical risk uh, particularly uh, and political risk in Europe with lots of elections looming but I want to talk a bit about uh, negative interest rates. If we bring up our second chart, we show the uh, quite extraordinary rally in UK and US um, government bond markets. What we haven't shown, of course, in this is in that countries such as Germany, Switzerland, Japan, we're now getting negative yields. Just do negative yields create particular problems for the financial system, for insurers, for banks? Um, that we should worry about more generally? Uh, well, it depends whether you, uh, these um, negative interest rates actually uh, what they are in real terms. I mean, if you have uh, sort of substantial um, real uh, interest rates in the bond market, then maybe it doesn't matter quite so much. Because but inflation's so low, in other words. In, indeed. But I mean, I think you have a, a terrific problem for institutional investors. If, for example, in the UK market, the, uh, the index-linked uh, bond market has been showing negative yields across the complete yield spectrum for the past year. Now that is serious trouble for institutional investors. Uh, a final question, John. Uh, we're expecting uh, high attendance at our conference um, uh, on capital markets. If you could sum up in a, in a word or two the sort of the mood amongst investors and practitioners in financial markets, what do you think it's likely to be? Um, I think a, a great deal of as always with financial markets, uncertainty, but a feeling that the central banks are still doing their stuff and that you've got to hang on in at the moment and, and continue to take risk because uh, you've got the central banks uh, still a long, long way from raising interest rates. And in the case of the Eurozone, you've got the ECB actually loosening policy. John, thank you very much. So some good high-level thoughts there. A lot of uncertainty for attendees at the FT Capital Markets Conference and questions about the role that central banks are playing in guiding financial markets.